Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another episode of Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations. In the last episode, we cross-examined the judge. We talked to a young Kay Faraday, uh, basically just trying to like see whether or not Detective Gumshoe was in the hallway the whole time. Because, um, you know, there are some reports saying that they did see him, there are some reports saying that they didn't. Uh, I believe, like, the judge said, like, uh, I was in the bathroom and I saw him... Um, but then I didn't see him later, but that was just because he was sitting down, so he might have been in the hallway the whole time. But then, uh, Yu comes in and is like, well, now you've just proven that Gumshoe is the only one who could have done it, so I guess we're gonna have to keep this battle going. Um, so yeah, let's get going. <sighs> September 10th, 5.45 p.m., District Court. Defendant lobby number one. W what is this incredibly overpowering sweet scent? It smells like flowers. Uncle Bad! Is this it? Hmm? Isn't that Detective Bad and Kay over there? It looks like she managed to escape the bailiff. No, that's not quite it. Aw, too bad, but it's so pretty! I think you're still a bit too young to be wearing that. But since you found it, I guess I can let you keep it. Thanks! I'll treasure it, always! Those two seem to get along rather well. Oh, here. I've got something else for you. Yay! Thank you, Uncle Bad! Earlier, I ate one of these with gummy. Gummy? Oh, you mean gumshoe. Gummy is... <laughs> he was trying to be nice to me because I was going to get in trouble. And then he got in trouble because he lied to protect me. Gummy. <laughs> I know he didn't kill Daddy. Don't cry. Faraday would be sad if he saw you crying. I'm not crying. Kay. Oh, it's the Mr. from before and the lady too. Don't you think it would be a good idea to go home for the time being? You are not involved in the investigation, so it's for the best if you do. Um... Actually, I'm Uncle Bad's assistant. So I'm related to the investigation. Is that so, Detective Bad? Yeah, I guess. What? You were just scolding... Uh, you were just scolding us like kids not to mess up the crime scene. And now you let this child run free? Why? People are free to investigate things outside of the actual crime scene. You also had a few things she wanted to look into. Got a problem with that? Ugh. I don't have a problem with that, but I am curious as to what Miss Yu was looking into. Uncle Bad! I'm gonna go look somewhere else now, okay? Alright. I'm counting on you. Oh, that's right! Hey, mister! Hmm? Yes, what is it? I know Gummy really isn't the bad guy. I mean it. So, please... Find the real bad guy, okay? I won't forgive whoever did this. But in the absence of the perfect piece of testimony and evidence, there is no one else who could be the true culprit other than Detective Gumshoe. Hmm? She wandered off while I was pondering. Uh... Detective Bad, what exactly was Kay searching for? Nothing that concerns you, boy. All, and I suppose it has something to do with Kay? It does, because she's Faraday's daughter. Anyway, hurry up and get to the point. I don't have time to waste. It sounds like he'd rather be left alone. I have something I'd like to confirm with you once again. I don't have anything to say to you. Hmm. <laughs> Be that as it may, we still have questions that we need answers to. Now then, first of all, what's that- what is that overpowering smell that is o permeating the room? Upon entering this room, I thought I was going to suffocate. It's that ultra-strong perfume you wears. She spilled some of it. I was having a bad time of it myself. I didn't think twice and opened the window. But that smell's still here. Perfume, huh? So the sweet scent in the air is perfume. Well, it's giving off quite a stench. I bet it's some cheap no-name brand. She said, 
It's a famous brand from overseas. It's a knockoff. Yes, definitely a knockoff. No disrespect, but she forced one of those bottles on me. Here, little girl, you can have it. Hm. I was born for, much, for a much more expensive and refined perfume. However, seeing as you just happen to have a spare, I suppose I'll take it. Miles Edgeworth, you will hold on to this bottle without fail. Ugh. Why can't she ever be honest about her wants? Damn it, Francisca. Now we have the perfume Miss Yu wears. Just fantastic. Is that all you wanted to talk about? If so, I'm going back to investigating. Actually, I still have a few other things I wish to inquire about. <laughs> Damn kids. So you were in this room the entire recess? Like I said, I made a call to the precinct to get that big lug down here. But other than that, I was waiting for the recess to end in here. At least your sorry is consistent. Earlier you stated that you were in this lobby with Miss Yu. Yeah, I ran into her in the hallway. She said she wanted to talk to me about something, so we came in here. Then what you're saying is that until Detective Gumshoe's arrival, you and Miss Yu were in two different locations? Hmm, guess I am. Interesting. Speaking of that lawyer, she seems to have a great dislike for you. Oof. Let's see, Miss Yu was the sister of the, s of the victim of the KG-8 incident. And as I recall, Detective Bad was the lead detective on the case. I wonder if the reason for her disdain isn't simply because you failed to guard Cece, but because you were the lead detective on the case. You knew? <laughs> I also know that today's trial involving the Kadopian Embassy staff member is being referred to as the second KG-8 incident. Now then, detective. I believe it's time you were honest with me. And told me the truth behind your relationship with Miss Yu and Mr. Faraday. And the KG-8 incident. If you are already know that much, I guess it'd be alright to tell you. Now then, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the KG-8 incident. It's not exactly a happy story. Other than the people who were directly involved, you two will be the first to hear what I'm about to tell. The honest truth behind the KG-8 incident. Faraday, you and I. As you already know, we three were involved with the KG-8 incident. Faraday and I, we were originally on the trail of a smuggling ring. You mean the smuggling case involving one of the Amano Group secretaries? <laughs> that trial was just a front. A facade? Yeah. But the case became tainted. All because the witness who was going to testify about the Amana Group's ties to the smuggling ring, CCU, was killed. And then what became of the secretary who was arrested? His name was Colin Devere. To be honest, the guy didn't know a thing about the smuggling ring. But he confessed to knowing about it anyway. Devere was probably being intimidated by the big boss man. Just another scapegoat. And the boss man of the Amano group. He can't seriously mean Ernest Amano. That can't be right. It's probably just Detective Bad's personal hypothesis. What is he trying to do, suspecting Mr. Amano of being involved with smuggling? I suppose it would have been quite difficult to secure an acquittal after he confessed. But the man who killed CCU, Manny Cochin, was a completely different person. But since he's already been acquitted of her murder... Mr. Faraday, how could you have let him go? If I remember correctly, I heard that Mr. Faraday had an important piece of evidence stolen from him. That wasn't Faraday's fault. It was mine. I wasn't vigilant enough. Faraday, Cece... I suppose I was supposed to protect him- I was supposed to protect them both. Miss Yu did mention that as well about how Detective Bad was supposed to guard her sister. But, even I, who was supposed to protect them, I fell into their trap. What kind of a trap? <laughs> the holes in this jacket are a testament to that trap. Y you mean, you were fired upon? Y you were shot at that many times in one gunfight? No. Only about half of these are from that case. But... 
The reason I continue to wear this jacket is to remind myself of the lessons I learned from the KG-8 incident. I see. I couldn't protect CCU, and the suspect was found not guilty. We had hit a brick wall, as far as the law was concerned. And that's when she came to the courtroom, the victim's sister. That's when I first met Callisto Yu. About when you first met Miss Yu, it was on the day the verdict of the KG-8 incident was handed down, was it not? Yes. Faraday and I, we apologized to her from the bottom of our hearts. It was all we could do, but... Just saying you're sorry won't bring my sister back, she said. And then she gave me a hard slap across the face. Well, she certainly had a lot of self-control to stop at just a slap. If it was me, not even a hundred lashes would have been punishment enough. I suppose not. You said it herself. That she never wanted to see either of us ever again. But after that, you've seen her many times over, correct? Yeah. Faraday and I, even after the KG-8 incident, had come to a close. We continued to hunt down the smuggling ring and got involved in a variety of cases. But it was no use. We cracked so many different cases. But the result was always the same. We can find the real mastermind behind the ring. Is the ring really that big? It was in the pursuit of the ring that we met you once again. It was during another trial related to the smuggling ring. Faraday was the prosecutor, and I, as the lead detective, took, the, took to the witness stand. You. She appeared out of the blue as the defense attorney. Her client was related to the smuggling ring, and she was defending them? Yeah. You. She was pursuing the ring- was pursuing the ring as best as she could as a lawyer. I think she defended Vrel this time, for the same reason. Come to think of it, Miss Yu did say something to the same effect. I- <laughs> I have my own agenda. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG-8 incident, alright? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer? Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Well was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him, ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. Hm. It doesn't matter what her reason is. Helping a criminal is just despicable! You're so naive, little girl. I could have stolen this lollipop from you. That's how naive you are. How dare you insult a daughter of Avon Karma! Just like us, you felt that she had hit the limit of what the law could do. That's all. The law is merely a, merely a tool. There is no limit to it. Only the skill of the craftsman. You two are still too young. But one day you'll know what I mean. But enough sidetracking. What matters is that we meet you again, in the pursuit of the smuggling ring. That's all. So what was your relation to Mr. Faraday? You even seem to know Kay fairly well. I met him when he was a rookie prosecutor, known him ever since. And Kay, I've known her since the day she was born. Faraday and I, we cracked quite a few cases together. Hmm. But you two seem to have made no progress at all in the Yatagarasu case. Did we touch a nerve? Hmm. <laughs> I only have one thing to say to you. No one knew more about the Yatagarasu than me and Faraday. That's why I was called upon to testify in today's trial. To prove that Rel was not the, the real Yatagarasu. Which I would have done. If he hadn't turned around and accused Faraday. After the accusation, I was asked to testify, but this time, to prove or disprove the accusation. But I guess I won't be doing that either. I sense that there's more to that statement that meets the eye. Perhaps a bit more digging into the Atagarasu is what's necessary. 
You claim to know much about the Atagarasu. Would you care to share what you know with me? Hmm. <laughs> what you two should be looking for right now is proof of murderous intent towards Faraday and Rel. I agree, which is exactly why I am asking you about the Atagarasu. What? The KGA incident and this second KGA incident, both of these cases are tied to the smuggling ring. And in both of these cases, the witness who was to testify about the ring was murdered. However, there is one point in which they differ, and that is the presence or absence of the great thief Yatagarasu. Mr. Rell claimed to be the Yatagarasu, however, in the middle of the trial, he suddenly declared Mr. Faraday to be the real Yatagarasu. Then, during the recess, they were both killed. Don't you find that to be the least bit odd? Miles Edgeworth, stop beating around the bush and just spit it out already! I believe that there must be some reason that the two men suspected of being the Yatagarasu were both killed at the same time. A reason, huh? And so in order to catch Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rail's cold-blooded killer, I feel that I need to learn as much as I can about the Yatagarasu. If it'll help you solve this case. Then I'll tell you. I'll tell you the reason why we've never caught the Yatagarasu. But what was that sudden outburst for? You always made me whip you by accident. Accident. Ugh! It still accidentally whipped me anyway. There are three main reasons why the Yatagarasu will always be one step ahead. First, the Yatagarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. Second, the Yatagarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. Third, the Yatagarasu don't leave a single shred of evidence behind. Ever. I see. So those are the Yatagarasu's special traits. Sounds like an incredibly elusive thief. The Yatagarasu has never been caught on tape, never tries to draw anyone's attention, and would never do something as low-brow as commit murder. That's how I knew that Rel wasn't the real Yatagarasu right away. But you can't use that sort of logic on its own to prove that he wasn't. Hm. Listen, little girl. I'm not done talking yet. Ugh. What's different about this time was that evidence related to the smuggling ring was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the one who had infiltrated the Kadopian embassy. The Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu sent the evidence? Until now, the Yatagarasu would always publish, publicize any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I, and a select few others, knew about. In that case, how can you be so sure that it was the Yatagarasu who sent it? That's easy. A special card that only the Yatagarasu uses was attached. That's how I can be so sure. And just what sort of card is it? Here, take a look at this article. Whenever the Yatagarasu wants to publicize something, a white card is sent along with the stolen information. But, when we questioned Rel about what was sent along with the white card, Rel had no idea what it was. Ah, that's how Detective Bad knew that Mr. Rel was a phony. Thank you very much. I have a much better understanding of the Yatagarasu now. Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? His Honor would like to transfer the evidence from today's trial over to you. So if you could please head over to the courtroom, it'd be much appreciated, sir. Understood. I'll be there shortly. Detective Bad, what does the law mean to you? Finding the answer to that question is the only reason I'm still alive. I became a prosecutor to find the answer to that question myself and to play a part in ensuring that all criminals everywhere are found guilty. September 10th, District Court, courtroom number three. Oh, it's Mr. It's you, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, it appears that his honor is still a bit dispirited. For the first time today, I experience what it's like to stand at the witness stand. Oh, I now have a greater appreciation but just how hard it is to give a testimony. Well, there's no reason for you to be all depressed about it, Your Honor. As a judge, no one expects you to think about anything other than the verdict. Francisco, there is no need to further depress His Honor. But I'm not trying to, Miles. 
Your Honor. Uh. Your Honor, I've come to collect the evidence that was transferred to that was to be transferred to me. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, the evidence. I. Your Honor. Oh, you. Yes, can I help you? I'd like to collect the evidence now, sir. Your Honor, do you think you can stay focused long enough to to at least do your job? Y yes, I'm sorry. And I would, except that the defense attorney has yet to arrive. She is busy with the investigation. So let's keep this brief, shall we? Very well. In that case, please confirm that all the pieces of evidence are present. Furthermore, the evidence that was used in the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell are also included. So please go ahead and use them in your investigation into their case. Understood, Your Honor. The pieces of evidence that were used in the murder of the two men. This could be a very good chance for me to find new leads regarding their case. And maybe even something that will finally lead me to the truth. I've placed all of the evidence over at the prosecutor's bench for you. I see. Thank you very much. I will go and confirm that they are all accounted for. Sorry, Francisca. I'm trying to run. It's not really working. Evidence that Miss Yu prepared is just sitting here on this table. You know you can't just walk off with it, right? Of course I do. Miss Yu must have been caught off guard by her client's sudden accusation. I wonder how she would have defended Mr. Will in that case if she were still alive. If he was still alive, she's alive, she's not dead. So this is the evidence related to today's Kodobian Embassy trial from Mr. Faraday's bag. You mean the evidence bags that was on the table in lo lobby number two, right? Yes. Finally, we can now take a look in it at the evidence itself, and not just the data about them. Let's be sure to thoroughly examine them while we have the time. Agreed. I want to take a good look at all the ev evidence from the Embassy murder too. And why is that? Because! I still don't fully understand what today's trial was all about! Ugh! Don't point your crop at me just because you don't know something! And don't you try to order me around just because Papa chose you today! I see someone is still sore about not being picked by Von Karma. It's all so... real to see the knife up close. So we have the knife, the, the gun, and the envelope. What's this organizer doing here? Oh, that's right! I completely forgot to tell you! About what, Your Honor? They found Mr. Faraday's personal organizer inside of the, that evidence bag of his. Detective Bad requested it be passed along to you. He said it would help the investigation. Detective Bad said that? What a strange stroke of luck. Well, never look a gift horse in the mouth. We might as well flip through it too. I won't press until I've inspected every suspicious looking at Granny. This gun. It was originally used to kill the Godopian Embassy staff member. When the crime was reported, the responding police found Mr. Wells still holding it, which immediately led to his arrest. And then, this gun took the original shooter's life. How ironic. Indeed. There doesn't seem to be anything else we can learn from this piece of evidence. It's the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday. Who would have thought that such a beautiful piece of art could be used for such a cruel act? And it's never crossed your mind that you used your riding crop for the, for the wrong purpose? Damn, Francisca. Mr. Faraday's organizer. It appears he was in the habit of using it. It looks like he wrote his strategy for getting Mr. Rell convicted down in here. I've collected the evidence to prove that Mr. Rell was the killer between the handgun Rell had on him. Okay. It appears that Mr. Faraday honestly believed that Mr. Rell was the killer in the case. And it would also appear that he had proof that Mr. Rell was not the Yajigarasu. Hmm. And he apparently also had a very definitive piece of evidence. Yes, I believe that Mr. Faraday was well prepared to discredit any claim Mr. Rell may have about being the real Yadagarasu. And he had a way to prove that Mr. Rell was the guilty party in the embassy murder. This organizer is a clue straight for Mr. Faraday. I'll have to take my time and give it a thorough read-through later. Look! There's a picture stuck between the pages here. It appears to be... a key. And a rather ornate one at that. Just look at the design on the handle. The craftsmanship is superb. Could this be the Yatagarasu's key Mr. Faraday mentioned in his organizer? The Yatagarasu's... key? Detective Bad said something earlier. What's different about this time? 
was that evidence related to the smuggling ring was sent to the police. And the sender was none other than the, the one who infiltrated the Kadopian Embassy, the Yadagarasu. The Yadagarasu sent the evidence? Until now, the Yadagarasu would always publicize any corrupt dealings through the mass media. But not this time. The evidence this time was something only Faraday and I and a select few others knew about. Mr. Faraday must have been trying to keep the secrets keys safe. As the prosecutor on both the Yadagarasu and Smuggling Ring cases, that's to be expected. Hmm, that's odd. What is it? Mr. Faraday didn't mention anything about a knife in his organizer. That certainly is odd. The weapon that was used to kill the Godopian Embassy staff member was the gun. But if that's the case, then where did the knife that was used to murder Mr. Faraday come from? Isn't it obvious? It was brought into the courthouse by Mr. Rell. That's the only logical conclusion, right? No, because it's not that easy to smuggle a weapon like that in here. Every person who enters the courthouse doors is checked thoroughly for contraband. Furthermore, the suspect was handcuffed, making it impossible for him to bring a knife as large as this inside. In that case, how do you suppose the knife ended up inside the courthouse? I need to think carefully here. There is nothing related to the knife written anywhere in Mr. Faraday's organizer. However, it is a fact that this knife came from Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. Conversely, there is one item listed in Mr. Faraday's organizer that no one has claimed to have seen today. So in order to solve this mystery, I believe I will need to take another good look at the evidence. Miles Edgeworth, can I take the fact that you have yet to answer me to mean that you don't have an answer for me? Actually, I do know the answer, Francisca. What? So what is it? One of the pieces of evidence we've been holding has been hiding a secret of its own. And it was through this piece of evidence that the knife was brought into the courthouse. Um... This Yadagarasu's key, Mr. Faraday mentions in his organizer. This is how the knife was brought into the courthouse. You're not making any sense, Miles Edgeverse. Hm. You just need to look a bit closer, Francisca, to see what I mean. Don't the color and the ornamentation of the keys remind you- ha Keys handle remind you of anything? They do remind me of the knife. Very good. Both the Yadagarasu's key in this photo and the murderous knife have this, have this very unique design on their handles. Furthermore, even though Mr. Faraday mentions the Adagarasu's key, the only object we found at the, at the crime scene was this knife. You don't seriously mean to say... It appears that you finally caught up. And yes, I do mean to say that these two pieces are in fact one and the same. Uh, but that's impossible! Even if that is what you believe, we should still investigate this possibility. Uh, now then, let us examine this knife in a bit more detail. It's the weapon that was used to kill Mr. Faraday. The handle and the blade itself both have beautiful designs worked into them. Look, there's even a flower-shaped design in this gold section here. If this hadn't been used as a tool for murder, I'd want it for myself. She seems to be drawn to the embellishments. Too bad this isn't mine to give. Not entirely sure what to look at. Oh! I can't believe it turned into a key! To think there was such a trick to this thing! So the weapon used to kill Mr. Faraday is actually the key the Yadigarasu stole. This piece of information is more critical than anything we learned up until now. Frankly, I'm shocked. Mr. Faraday only mentioned the key aspect of this piece of evidence in his organizer. It's possible that he even had no idea that the key was hiding a knife blade inside. But if that's true, then only someone who knew about the key to the, to the knife trick could have killed Mr. Faraday. 
Even among law enforcement, this key was top secret. We're looking for someone who knew even more about the key than even Mr. Faraday. Meaning that the only person it could be is the one who sent the key in the first place. The great thief Yatagarasu! Then maybe Mr. Rel really was the Yatagarasu. And he was the one who killed Mr. Faraday. Isn't that one possible scenario? No, not really. Especially since Mr. Faraday was absolutely convinced that Mr. Rel was not the Yatagarasu. Besides, as Detective Bad said earlier... But... When we questioned Vrel about what was sent along with the white card, Vrel had no idea what it was. I see. Alright then, I guess the person who knows the trick behind this key is someone else, and that person is the real Yatagarasu. Hmm, it seems that this key is truly the key to solving this case. I took a quick look through these documents before the trial started. Well, I wasn't even afforded the opportunity to skim it. Hmm. I suppose I should explain it to you, then. Yes, you should. Perfectly, and in its entirety, if you please. On the night of September 8th, an embassy staff member was killed in front of the embassy. The staff member died of shock due to being shot in the heart. Macrell was brought into <laughs> in that night as a suspect and thoroughly questioned because the murder weapon was found on him, for which he was arrested on the spot. A simpleton of a man, that's what he was. Hmm, perhaps he was, for the weapon wasn't the only incriminating evidence we had. Mr. Rell was caught in the, in the act on film by a security camera. He was an even bigger simpleton than I thought. I can't believe he didn't notice a security camera. The Godopian Embassy's security system is supposedly very well designed. He may have simply not been aware that there was a camera in the area. So, have you seen the contents of the video for yourself? Yes, the surveillance video and the security camera took was played during the trial by Mr. Faraday. You can clearly identify Mr. Rell on it. Even the sound of the gunshot was crystal clear. So the footage included sound, huh? I don't think I'd ever wanted to see the moment of someone's death in real life. Me neither. That's odd. We're short one piece of evidence. And the piece that's missing is a surveillance video that was played in court. It's a surveillance video? How could the piece of evidence just disappear? Where did it go? The, sh the video showing the moment in which Mr. Rell committed the murder. Where could it have gone indeed? Are you done with your inve inspection of the evidence? Yes, I'm finished. However, Your Honor, I am missing a single piece of prosecutorial evidence. Your Honor? But you're derelict in your duties. What? No! I dare not lick my duties! What do you take me for? No, Your Honor. The most important piece of evidence in today's trial, the surveillance video, is not amongst the evidence you laid out for me. Hmm. But I brought Mr. Faraday's whole bag with me from the crime scene. Maybe the tape is still somewhere at the crime scene? There's something wrong here. Something about this missing piece of evidence. It would appear that for me to find the answers I seek, I will have to pay another visit to the scene of the, of the crime. Deten Defendant Lobby Number Two, not Detective Lobby Number Two. What am I saying? Goodness me. September 10th, 6 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. That looks like Lang. What the hell? Hmm? Huh? That's Detective Bad. But who is he with? I've never seen that officer before. Ha 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 ha! Isn't this Lang's theme? No, not yet. And I've looked everywhere. I see. Well then, please continue with the search. Understood. I'll continue the search. Heh. <laughs> so you're the one running this show. Prosecutors like you shouldn't even be allowed at the crime scene. How dare you! Just who do you think you are? Of course it's Lang. What was that all about? And who was that man just now? Whoever he was, I've never seen a more impudent officer in my life. Does he even know that we're standing right here behind him? I know you're standing right behind me. What do you want, kids? It looks like you were paying attention after all. Of course I was. I have eyes in the back of my head. Ah, oh, so that mirror isn't for vanity's sake. It's for him to keep an eye on who or what is behind him at all times. 
So tell me, Detective Bad, who was that rude man just now? The guy came here from the Republic of Zheng Fa to study. He's Agent Lang, of course. He's trying everything he can to revive the lost honor of his family. He's traveling the world to study different philosophies of detainment from scratch. By visiting various police departments around the world, he has a lot of dedication. He's still just a rookie cop, but I sense a strong grudge of some sort from him. The guy's more useful than Gumshoe, even if he is rude. Well, he sure has a lot of guts to come in this country and give prosecutors a hard time. I agree, however, I can think of one young lady that statement also applies to. Francisca? Anyway, what was that agent bad- what was that agent looking for, Detective Bad? Earlier, that little girl was poking around in Lobby Number 1 as well. Like I said before, it's got nothing to do with the two of you. <laughs> I highly doubt that it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Fine, if this is the game I must play, then I will take this opportunity. To draw out what he's been hiding and happened in this room- And what happened in this room straight from him. Talk to me. No, examine. God damn it. No. Stop it. Suppose you're right. Actually, that's not true. I bet a person of small stature could slip in. Francisco, would you care to help me test out my theory? No! Shut the fuck up! Drat, I must remember to be more tactful around the vertically challenged. <laughs> what am I talking? What am I saying? Earlier you were in lobby number one, now you're here in lobby number two. You are quite the busy man to take to bad. Multiple returns to a crime scene brings about success. As a we detectives say, I see. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I asked about what happened again, correct? I don't have anything left to say to you, boy. Ugh, boy? You'll see. I will draw my answer from you one way or another. Would it kill you to help us even a tiny bit in our investigation? I gave Faraday's notebook to the judge earlier. That's help enough, don't you think? Ugh! Please, we are asking you for just a bit more of your cooperation. Don't push me, kid. I'd like to ask once again about what happened around here at the time of the crime. I refuse to t to answer. Any more investigating you do would be a waste of time. Besides, how am I supposed to answer questions about things I don't know about? Things you don't know about? But aren't you supposed to know everything? He should. Wait, is it possible? Maybe he doesn't know about the trick behind that piece of evidence. I should try showing it to him. It may prove to be the key to getting some answers from Detective Bad. Here's the key! Detective Bad, did you know of the existence of this little item in this photograph? Hmm, <laughs> of course I did. It's my job to know everything related to the Yadagarasu case. In that case, let me ask you something. Did you know that the knife ki that killed Mr. Faraday and this, and this Yadagarasu's key are one and the same? What? That's impossible! It looks like he didn't know after all. This piece of evidence which we call the Yatagarasu's key is actually a well-camouflaged knife. Mr. Faraday was planning to use this Yatagarasu's key to prove that Mr. Well was not the real Yatagarasu. Isn't that correct? I guess so. However, Mr. Faraday had no idea that it was, in fact, a knife. Yeah, and I have to admit, neither one of us knew that fact. And if neither of us knew, then no one in law enforcement knew either. How did we miss something as big as this? I noticed that a little while ago you appeared to be searching for something. I presume that this key is what you were searching for. Yeah, that's right. And why were you searching for it? Because I promised Faraday. I promised that I protect that key with my life. But after he was killed, the key disappeared from, the, from Faraday's evidence bag. You would have thought that the key is what took Faraday's life. Detective Bad. So that we may find the truth, please testify for me once more. All right. But it doesn't matter how many times I tell you about what happened. Nothing will change. Detective Bad. I ask that you please testify once more about what happened in lobby number two and what you experienced in lobby number one. My answer was still the same. And this is the last time I'm gonna do this. 
That's fine, because I only needed this one last time to clear everything up and find the truth behind this case. And that is actually where we're going to stop for today. Roll the end card. Objection! You haven't hit like and subscribe yet! Hold it! You forgot to ring the bell to get notified whenever I upload! Take that! Click here to watch more of my videos! Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!